Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now, now and forever. The two principal effects of actual grace, we know, is the enlightening of the mind and the strengthening of the will. When our Lord calls someone to follow Him in whatever vocation that might be or whatever mission it might entail, ordinarily He gives what's called inclinations of grace. So our Lord enlightens our minds and if we're faithful over time, inclines it to judge and to reason in a certain way. Our Lord strengthens our wills, and if we're faithful, over time, inclines it to will a specific good. And our peace, the peace that we all need and all seek, especially right now, comes from doing the will of God. Today's gospel continues the one from yesterday. And here our Lord repeats to his disciples what he already told the rich young man, you know, on the nature of what it truly means to follow him. And we know that the, the rich young man went away sad after he heard what our Lord said. And here, the disciples, after hearing what our Lord said, were greatly astonished. They thought, thought it was impossible and said, who then can be saved? Then our Lord looked at them and said, for men, this is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. It's possible precisely because God accompanies us day by day, moment by moment, with His grace. Our peace comes from the grace of God. St. Augustine defines peace as tranquility of order. Notice he doesn't merely define it as the absence of war or the absence of suffering. Tranquility of order, it's something deeper. It's the tranquility, the harmony between what God is asking of us and its fulfillment. When there's harmony between these two things, then there is peace in our souls. So peace is compatible with suffering. You know, it's, it's interesting how one of the closest collaborators of John Paul II testified how he saw, especially during the, the last years of his life, how John Paul II suffered a whole lot. Suffered a whole lot. But, he said, he never saw him sad. He never saw him sad. A certain interior peace in his soul. Mother Teresa said, you know, sadness comes from refusing Jesus something. When someone is sad, that someone is probably refusing Jesus something, right? And for peace, Men, for men, this is impossible, but for God, all things is possible. And it's possible because, again, we have our Blessed Mother. Our Lady is the living icon of peace in the midst of suffering. I think it was Chesterton who said, her heart was broken by her unbroken word, meaning her yes to God was yes to everything that he asked of her. It led her all the way to the cross where her heart was pierced. And she is the living model for us. You know, Our Lady at the foot of the cross. She's a living model of peace 
in the midst of suffering, and the grace of peace flows from her hands. So let us always have her, um, let, let us always have recourse to her, asking her especially for this grace, for peace in the midst of turmoil. Praise be Jesus and Mary.